Hello everyone, I'm Tristok44 and welcome to this Let's Play of Avernum 3. Well, we've pretty much done all our exploring up and up our Avernum, and now it's finally time. Finally time for the Avernites to make their first steps back onto the surface. This is the North Gate. You must pass through here to return to the world's surface. The way is protected by a lava pool with a narrow bridge over it, which can be collapsed quickly in case of Empire attack. We're not going to turn that. That would crap us. Huh. There's something over there? Oh, I get it. Okay, we don't need to go in there. Okay. And out we go. You emerge from Fort Emergence into the outdoors. A harsh yellow light from above blinds you and the air smells strange. For a while, the size and openness of the blue space above you is terrifying. Still, there is nothing to do but press on. You emerge from the valley and are immediately greeted by a view which brings tears to your eyes. It has been many years since you have seen the surface, those of you who have seen it at all. And after years of dreaming, here it finally is, laid out before you. Plants are everywhere. You feel the wind, and the sky is a blue richer than any you've ever seen. It's warm and dry, and there can be no doubt. You are finally home. You stand there for an hour, just admiring the sights and feeling the sensations. Then you look around more carefully. This area is very unsettled. There's a river to the south, but there are no human settlements as far as you can see. This is excellent news. Not only is Fort Emergence under no immediate danger of attack, but there's plenty of room around here for Avernites to settle. But it wouldn't do to get too excited too soon. There's still plenty to be discovered and plenty of investigation to do. You'll have to meet the surface people who are likely to be very different from you. Also, while there is great joy in leaving the caves, it's far more frightening than you thought it would be. After years of tunnels and shadows, the open sky and bright sun leave you feeling constantly blinded and exposed. A new chapter in the life of Avernum has just begun. A new land awaits you. It's time to explore. Something was added to my journal. You have a journal? Oh, that's new. Day one arrived at Fort... Uh, hmm. Nice. Well, we're here. You notice some movement in the underbrush ahead. You look carefully, wondering what sort of friendly surface creature will emerge. You are disappointed to find, however, that the approaching creatures aren't animals, but blobs of brightly colored slime. The grass underneath them curls up and dissolves as they glide over it. They move quickly towards you. Four amber slimes, an ochre slime, and an emerald slime. This is very odd. The Empire worked for years to slay all monsters on the surface, but here is a strange beast unlike any you've ever seen. It is a large slime, bubbling and magical. It leaves a trail of dead plants behind as it oozes around. This doesn't seem lovely. Alright then. Strange that there are slimes here. Ah! Slowed? That's worrying. Okay. Here's a river, various rocks and such in it. Forest. Actual greenery and trees. First time any creature like Teresa has ever seen anything like this. You see, ahead, a group of unicorns grazing on weeds and bracken. Even in Avernum you had heard of unicorns, the legendary pests of the surface world. They are smelly, dirty, goat-like beasts with a single horn, which the ill-tempered creatures use to impale anyone luckless enough to stumble into them. They are nasty animals, and the local farmers usually do anything they can to wipe them out. Fortunately, this pack doesn't seem interested in you at the moment. However, you could always take the battle to them. Let's leave them peacefully. You are at the end of a narrow pass, winding its way through the mountains. It seems like it would be a very useful shortcut, but you can find no signs of passing humanoids. This veil is filled with the shredded, rapidly crumbling hu unicorn hu horns. The rocks have bits of dark fur on them where the beasts rubbed against them. In the distance among the rocks, you think that you see the movement of small black creatures. So, unicorns over there. Alright, let's take a look at the map we have here. Let's see. Fort Emergence here. There's a pass around here. Krizsan. Krizsan Province. Looks like there must be a town down there. We may as well go find our way towards it, see if we can visit. I mean, why not? We need to know what kind of things we're encountering. Let's see. Ford here. Cross carefully. Undertow is strong. Well, okay then. We'll keep that in mind. And it's getting dark. Actual night and day here. 
you find a large stone farmhouse. It was once a solid, beautiful stone structure. Now the crops are dead, the land has been spoiled by slimes, and the building looks abandoned. Enter and search the building. You enter and look around. Many acidic slimes have been in and out of here, with the result that everything inside is ruined and holes have been burned in the walls and the ceiling. While searching, you look out the window and find you've been surrounded. Three ochre slimes and, an, and two emerald slimes. Okay, then! Well, ice lances, please. Thank you. And there we go. You clean the slime off your blade and take one last tour around the farmhouse. Anything that might have been useful there has been dissolved or eaten. There's not even fruit in the garden. You leave the ruin behind. Okay. So the past must be around here somewhere. Oh! You find signs that someone has hidden something here. You search and find a small supply cache with healing herbs and 37 coins. Yes, yeah, so that's something new you'll find here. Occasionally, you'll come across these little dirt-colored patches, which are basically supply caches. And you can find stuff in them, which is useful. I mean, who doesn't want stuff? You're on the road leading north from Krizsan province. The air is cleaner and the underbrush lacks the starred burned areas caused by the passage of the slimes. Nearby, you see a friendly inn built there here to aid travelers heading to and from Krizsan. The end of Blades. You know what? We can start in an inn. Why not? It's it's somewhere to start. Hopefully the creatures here don't... Hopefully the people here don't want to completely kill us. And there's a bear here! Hello, random bear. <coughs> Goodbye, random bear. That was random, but now it's dead. Yeah, I'm trying to uncover as much as I can, even though I don't really need to. It's the way I am! There. Okay, random bear outside this inn. Now dead. Fine. You enter the Inn of Blades. This well-defended outpost provides a hot meal and safe bed for many of Alorum's travelers. The guards let you in, though they watch you nervously as you pass. Don't mind us. We're just passing through, trying to learn what we can. Chickens! Cluck, cluck, cluck. Guard there. Those are probably storage rooms or storage sheds or something. Oh, there's someone in here. I guess that's actually the kitchen. There's a storage shed. Alright. So this must be the inn itself. There's an old man behind the counter pulling beers. He doesn't look very strong or agile, but he has several large knives sheathed at his belt. They're clearly meant for more than cooking. He nods at you. I'm known as Claw Hardblade. That's a name. What is this place? I've run this inn here for many years. We have our own brew of beer, only five coins around. We also have one room open, only ten coins for the night. How long have you run this place? I started this inn back when Chris Sand Province was still the border of civilization. Back then, everything was much rougher. Where's Chris Sand Province relative to everywhere else? This is the southernmost province in Valorum and the most recently settled. When people first moved down here about twenty years ago, it was pretty rough. How rough was it? There were bandits down here, and goblins, and hordes in a film, too. I provided a safe place for people to stay when moving south. That's when I got my nickname. Are there any goblins left? He pats the knives at his side. Most of them are gone, but not all. That's where my nickname comes from. Where does your nickname come from? I took on the name Claw Hardblade so people knew I meant business. I did my share of killing to back the name up. Now people won't call me anything else, and it lets people pretend it's still rough old days. So I'm Claw Hardblade until I retire. There you go. What happened to all the Nephilim? He seems unwilling to talk about it in the presence of a Nephil. They were all... they... It was a terrible injustice. Not all of them were hostile. You know how the Empire was towards non-humans. How is the Empire now? Much better if you ask me. Since Empress Prazak came to power, non-humans have actually been tolerated. That's why you can be here without everyone shouting to hang the Nephil. 
Yeah, and nobody seems to be saying anything about Teresa either. Let's keep quiet about that. Teresa, in fact, now that I think about it, should we really have made the first exploratory force include a non-human and a creature that has never been seen on the surface? I feel like uh, Covert Ops maybe dropped the ball a bit on this one. The border to what, by the way? The border to the settled lands. This is about the only pla area unsettled by humans in this ho in the whole world. Interesting. Let's speak to other people here. You meet a traveler, one of the many refugees and wanderers of Aloran. This person is clearly very exhausted, nervous, and eager to be left in peace. Eventually, you take the hint and move on. Traveler, traveler. Oh, that guy's got a name. There's a mage sitting here, deep in his cups. He motions you to sit with him. I'm Arian. How are you? Where are you traveling to? Nowhere yet. I've been stuck here for a while. Minor difficulties. I was going south to find a teacher. I just came from the Isle of Shader. Why are you stuck? He drinks some beer and seems to approve of the taste. There are worse places to be stuck, but I would prefer to settle my difficulties and keep moving south. You didn't really answer my question. He looks at you blankly. That's more than I want to go into. Just a minor disagreement regarding some lumps of metal. What's so special about some lumps of metal? I have concealed several v pieces of metal nearby. I wish it brought to me. It is not too valuable to most, but it has uses for my work. If you'll bring it to me, I will reward you. To the north, on the east side of the river, are several trees in a diamond shape. The metal is hidden at the base of a stone spire due north at the center of the diamond. Please bring it to me, and I will reward you. We can do that. Uh, are you feeling alright? Sure, nothing a gallon of beer can't help. Who is the teacher you're looking for? He's a wizard. None know his name, but he travels around Krisan province spreading wisdom. What sort of wisdom? He has said, When you find the identity of another, you lose the identity of yourself. One can ponder his wisdom for many months and not see the true heart of it. Right. I need a teacher too. Can you teach us anything? You can! Excellent! Let's see, uh... Oh, we can't do very much, can we? You know what? Make Bolt of Fire level 2 at least. The rest of it... I like Ice Lances to be stronger, but we'd need more coin for that. Shouldn't have bought all those spells or such before. Oh well. How could I get to the Isle of Shader? Head north to Farport. You can catch a ferry. Watch out, though. The island is infested with horrible disease-carrying bugs. Lovely. And there's one more person here. The man at this table wears very loose black clothes. He eats a Spartan meal of bread and fruit. Uh, greetings, travelers. You're looking for company to ease your minds during your long journey, yes? I'm Morales. Why are you here? I'm a traveler. Until recently, I lived on the Isle of Begail. He munches a bit of crust. Why did you leave the Isle of Begail? I learned much there, but the monsters became too, thre too threatening, so I decided to leave for a while. What sort of monster plague affects Begale? The isle has been set upon by hordes of cockroaches. They're huge and carry lethal diseases. A place that encourages people to stay. Cockroaches? A horde of cockroaches! Anybody get a can of raid? What is the Inama Church? He smiles enigmatically. What they teach, I am unworthy to interpret to you. You'll simply have to visit. The Anama effectively rule over the island. You should have little trouble finding them. You can reach the island by boat. How do I find a boat heading to Begale? He takes a sip of water. Take the road north from here. At the T intersection to the northeast, go to Farport to the west. There you can take a boat to Begale. I wish you luck. Now I have much to ponder. Many apologies. Okay, then. Oh, well, let's take a look at these rooms here. Nothing in there. The dresser won't open. You try to find a locker latch, but there isn't one. Must be magically sealed somehow. Hmm, I'm guessing it's probably the reward for that one guy. Nothing in there. We can disarm the trap. Ooh, spiritual herbs. And a healing potion. Nice. Alright, uh... I think we can take a look to the north. 
So to cross the river to the north, we'll find a diamond of trees. End of blades, ten miles south, Farport and Sheramick to the east. Ah! Ah, that must be it! As you search the hills, you find the six-foot-high pile of stones you were told about. You poke around in the pile and find several lumps of something that seem like metal, but far too light and lusterless. It's quite unusual. Take it. You pick up the odd-looking rocks and pocket them. As you turn, you see some people you were sure weren't there before. They immediately move to attack. These rocks must have some unusual properties. Five brigands, two apprentice mages, and a mage. Oh, that hurt! Alright, you heal Nippur. And you, Ice Lances. That helped a bit. There's that friggin', there's that one. Oh, he summoned friends! Okay then. How about. That didn't really do what I hoped. Ow! Oh boy, that's not good. Oh, this is bad. Um, heal up Carl immediately. And kill that. Ah, shit! Really? We almost had it. Great. Hold on, I need to reload and go through all this again. I'll be back shortly. Huh, interesting. You are sharing this road with a band of merchants. They are leading wooden carts pulled by strong horses. They seem very nervous, however. They keep their distance from you, and their guards keep their hands on their weapons. You aren't sure whether they were scared by your paleness, or are just generally paranoid. Bit random, but okay. Oh, incidentally, in, uh... In my run back up here, I happen to stumble upon uh, another bunch of random slimes in an event. Basically, when we walked up to the shore of a river and saw a fish that isn't the comforting pail that we're normally used to. Anyway, let's try this again. Take the metal, six brigands, two apprentice mages, and a mage. Right, we can kill off... Can't kill that one. Damn. Well, we can kill off the apprentices, at least. You go after that one. Ow! That was painful! Why do I have the feeling we're about to fail again? Really? Reloading again. Okay, we can do this. It's going to take a couple tries, but we'll kill them. Nice. Ow. I'm healing the poor. Come on, you can kill him. Those Ursag, those do not look good at all. Okay, mage is dead. Ow. <coughs> Holy crap, those things are deadly. Okay, let's reload again. Jesus, this is annoying. Can we actually cast any No, we can only cast light. Damn it. Let's kill these guys. At least we can kill that. Chit racks. How the hell can he kill chit ra How the hell does he summon chit racks anyway? I mean, the friggin' chit racks. You guys shouldn't know chit racks even exist. Hmm. Can't really get around to it. Ah, there we go. Ow. Right, heal the poor. Ow. Wow, they're still alive. Shocking. I kill that one. Okay. Take a healing potion and finish off that. How did you survive? <sighs> okay. Heal up Pollux. 
casting of this. Really? You missed? Uh, okay, finish off that one. There you go. Fireball, finish off the last shit rack. Major's annoying. Alright, Carl, what can you take? Iron studded armor? Sure. A healing potion to replace the one you used? Sure. Done. Look like there's anything else we need here. Okay. You closely inspect the bodies of the mages who mugged you. You find something interesting. All of them have small red eyes mm -hmm. tattooed on the insides of their wrists. That is... interesting and a little concerning. Who the hell did we just piss off? Oi! I brought those metal lumps you hid. Slow level three! Huh! Nice! You present the medal to him. He gladly takes it. Did you have any trouble? You tell him about the ambush. He seems troubled. Oh dear. I'll have to be very careful when I head south. Now for your reward. Nowadays, little is more useful than spells, especially with the monsters about. He gives you a brief, potent magical lesson. You are now able to cast a very potent version of the spell Slow. The people who attacked us had red eyes tattooed on their wrists. Why? He looks very uncomfortable. I have no idea. You're sure that he's lying, but you can't th get the truth out of him. What was that metal? Magically processed steel and silver alloy. With a great amount of ma effort and magical skill, it will be worked into a powerful magical charm. Now that you have your metal, are you leaving? He finishes his drink. Yes, yes I am. Before I go, though, I left something for you. If you need to know the spell I taught you, look in the dresser in the northernmost room of this inn. Okay, at least we know. We'd like a room for the night, please. Claw leads you to your room and wishes you a restful night's sleep. Despite a few mild bed bug bites, you have a good night. And in here is where we can learn... Huh. Teresa, why don't you hold on to that? So basically... Hmm. We can use this at any time to learn the spell slow. Not that we're really going to need it, but you know what, let's leave it here. Actually, no, we'll take it. We'll leave it back in, uh... In Fort Emergence. Harley seems the best place to leave it. I didn't want to go back in! <sighs> okay. And I believe to the south is another town. The town of Krizan, I believe that was mentioned. Yeah, let's, let's go drop it off in Fort Emergence. We may as well. I mean, we have a storage room here. Some place we can keep everything. Alright, Teresa, leave the spell to him here. Thank you. And you know what? Let's go, uh, let's go let him know. Anaximander. You tell Anaximander of what you saw on the surface. He doesn't seem surprised. Hmm, so far it sounds much like what we expected. We're at the outskirts of the Empire, far from the Symmetry of Civilization. There may still be hope that we can develop some sort of colony up here, hidden in the wilds. First, however, we need to learn much more. Go out and explore. Visit towns and cities. Find out what forces the Empire has out here. Then report back. Okay. Mm -hmm. You report to an Anaximander on seeing this strange slime creature. He looks very serious. This is bizarre, to say the least. The Empire was determined to purge the world of all that was different or dangerous. And it seems that dangerous creatures in the height of, this em of the Empire's power are returning. Continue to investigate this situation. This is something we need to learn much more about. We shall indeed do so. Okay, then. Well, next episode, I think we should probably head south and visit the nearest town, Krizan. I believe we should be able to reach it if we just follow the road southwards. That'll be in the next episode. So until then, I am Chester44. That is Carl Nepor, Pollux, and Teresa. This has been an Avernum 3 Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.